Okay, hi and uh, welcome everybody to this uh, first presentation of this year's virtual um, psychical um, psychometric computing uh, workshop. I'm very happy to introduce uh, Ting Wang, who um, uh, actually I've never met in, in person, but uh, have have met uh, virtually um, uh, quite some time uh, ago. I had um, uh, the, the privilege of um, working together with her and her uh, PhD advisor at Merkley, who is also joining us today uh, as a participant uh, in the conference uh, on, a, on a project where we uh, used um, um, model scores uh, to, to assess uh, measurement invariance and psychometric uh, models. And from, from there, we, uh, um, we had started some, uh, some discussions, what other things we could do in that uh, direction. And yeah, Ting uh, has done some, uh, some great work uh, since then. And um, yeah, it, it expanded uh, the, the frame of, uh, of what, you, uh, what you can do with, with score-based tests. Um, um, including various psychometric models and what we will um, learn about today, um, generalized linear mixed effects models, which uh, was, uh, was a very um, hard problem, I always uh, thought, but um, yeah, Ting um, in co collaboration with, with Ed um, solved it and provided this uh, really nice uh, package, uh, Murder, and this uh, is what we will hear about today. Um, since then, she's also contributed to other um, areas, um, specifically Bayesian latent variable modeling. And uh, in her uh, day job, she's now a psychometrician um, working for the American Board of uh, Family Medicine, but still very active doing uh, research in co collaboration with the folks at the University of Missouri. So Ting, I'm very happy to have you. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Um, today, I'm going to talk about this um, MER derived package. Th this, um, oh, this package will, can compute the case-wise and the cluster-wise derivatives for models with mixed effects with respect to all parameters. So first we'll talk about why do we care about those derivatives. Then we'll talk about the linear mixed models and generalize the linear mixed models separately. Within each section, we'll first introduce the computation details and then we show several application examples. In the end, we'll discuss some future developments based on this work. So within our ecosystem, we have several very useful packages. Some which package could calculate the robust covariance matrix and further give you the robust standard errors. Structural change can detect uh, parameter change. Non-nested two package could compare non-nested models. Party kit is a pack is a two kit uh, for recursive partitioning, so we can build a, re a regression tree. All these uh, packages seem non-relevant in the first of guns, but they all utilize case-wise partial first derivatives, also called scores, and the second derivatives, um, like Fisher information matrix or Hessian. But these quantities are not available for uh, linear mixed models and generalize the linear mixed models. And these models are usually estimated by an R package called LME4. So MER derived is a package could utilize the output from LME4 to compute the first and the second derivatives for linear mixed models and generalize the linear mixed models. So first, let's look at the linear mixed models. The computation for linear mixed model is uh, relatively easier because all the results are analytical. The conditional distribution for linear mixed model is uh, shown here. 
given the random effect B, response variable Y follows a normal distribution uh, with mean as X beta plus Z B, where X and Z are the design matrix for the fixed and random effects. R is the residual variance. B follows a normal distribution with mean uh, zero and the variance covariance as G. Um, the residual variance R is a diagonal matrix. The marginal distribution of the linear mixed model is a uh, still normal distribution with uh, the mean as X beta and the V uh, and the variance covariance as V. V has two parts. The first part is uh, related to the uh, variance covariance for the random effects. And then the second part is the regular residual variance. So given this, we can derive the marginal law of likelihood uh, as uh, equation six. So all these are the uh, normal setup for the linear mixed model. Then after we get the general law of likelihood, we can, we can derive the gradient for beta uh, as equation seven. Then for the case Y scores, we just use a trick as a, here to indicate the element, uh, element wise multiplication. This is the key step to get the scores from the gradient. So using the same rationale, we can get uh, the random, the, the, um, the variance covariance uh, parameters scores. First, we still get the gradient first, and then we use the, the element-wise multi multiplication here, and the trace um, computation in the gradient is changed to diagonal. Here, this sigma vector contains all the variance uh, covariance parameters in the random effect and also the residual variance. Now we have all the scores for the parameters. Now we can look at the, the second der 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 derivatives, which is the Fisher information matrix. We can divide the Fisher information matrix into these four blocks. These two diagonal blocks are related to the fixed parameters and the, uh, the, all the parameters related to the variance covariance which is contained in this made, uh, elements are zero. And uh, the only thing we need to do are to, uh, is to derive the, uh, the, comp uh, the analytic results for the two diagonal elements. The results are showing here. So we have two off diagonal zeros here, and these two blocks are the analytical results. Now we have first the derivatives as the scores and the second derivative, the Fisher information matrix. We can use these quantities to do some applications. The first application is related to the Huber-White sandwich estimator. Assuming you have a, so the sandwich estimator is is like a sandwich. You have the bread and the meat. The bread here is the A. A is the uh, Fisher information matrix. And the B, assuming you have um, one cluster in your, uh, in, your in your mixed model. So the B is the cross product of the cluster wise scores. The, Cluster-wise score means you just sum the case-wise scores within the same cluster. And then after you get this uh, V cosi, the square root of the diagonal elements of this V are the robust standard errors. So let's look at some code. First, we call the LME4 and merge derived uh, package and then we fit the famous sleep study data. 
The response is the reaction time. The days is the fixed uh, uh, fixed uh, uh, variable. And this is the, uh, all the variables within the brackets are the random part. Um, so from for this model, we have six parameters in total. Um, two fix the parameters, three random uh, param uh, three parameters for random uh, variance and the covariance. And then the last one is the residu residual variance. So if we want to get the case-wise score, we just uh, use the ASTA form uh, uh, function and then set, tell the function, what is your model? And you say, level equals two, 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 one means you want the case-wise score. Here, the dimension for this score matrix is 180 rows, means you have 180 observations or 180 reaction times and six parameters. Then if you want the cluster-wise score, the, the, uh, you change the, the level equals to two, means you want the cluster-wise scores. So the dimension for the cluster-wise score is 18 rows, means you have 18 clusters or 18 subject in this case, and um, still you have six parameters. Then for the various covariance uh, or the Fisher information, you, if you take the inverse, it, it will be the Fisher, uh, Fisher information matrix. Then you, you do this V call function, then uh, the most important argument here is the full equals to true. It means you want the various covariance matrix for all the parameters. Uh, this is not available in, LMA, in LME4 package. Uh, in LME4, you will only get the variance covariance with respect to the fixed parameters, which is the um, this part. You won't get this part and the off diagonal zeros. Um, now we have the score matrix and also the Fisher information matrix. Then we call this uh, the, the variance, uh, the library sandwich, and then we tell the sandwich what is the bread, what is the meat, and then you compose the sandwich. And here is the output for the sandwich matrix. And the, off, the square root of the off diagonal are standard errors, robust standard errors for those parameters. The second example is related to the score-based test. Score-based test utilize the, uh, the scores. So if after you build a model, if the parameter is uh, stable against an auxiliary variable, say people's age or uh, some other auxiliary variable, uh, then the score, the, the a function of the cumulative score will follow a Brownian bridge. And uh, so you can see if your empirical value is uh, smaller or larger than the critical value. If it is uh, larger than the critical value, it means your now hypothesis, which is your the parameter is stable, is rejected. It means so you know uh, your parameter is changing against this auxiliary variable, and the changing point is the peak of the empirical fluctuation process. And this test has been utilized in generalized the linear model, uh, factor analysis model, and item response theory models. And here we'll show how to use this test in linear mixed models. The data we use here are, it, it's related to um, over 7,000 high school students. They, they're from 160 schools. They all can, completed a math achievement test. The student's uh, social, socioeconomic status is the level one covariate. 
it is plausible that the relationship between student socioeconomic sta status and their math achievement differs across schools with different mean SES. The mean SES is the level two covariate, which means just the, the mean of all the students' uh, socioeconomic status within the school. But before we detect, we, we run any interaction effects, we want to make sure that there is no heterogeneity in random effect or, re, uh, resi or residual variance parameters. Because if there is heterogeneity in these variance uh, parameters, uh, it will impact the significance test of the fixed parameters. So you, will, you might conclude uh, incorrectly for the, for the fixed uh, parameters significance. Score-based score test could provide a very simple systematic way to detect a heterogeneity in typical linear mixed models. So first uh, we call uh, the LME, uh, the LM uh, arrive package contains the data set. So we, we fit the model still in, L in LME4 package. So the fixed parameters are the C, is the C SES and still the random parts are uh, in the brackets. The clustering uh, variable is the school. And then we use the structural change package, the, the SC test. We say, what is the model and the, the auxiliary variable is the mean SES. The parameter we want to test is the random, uh, is the school's uh, uh, variance, which is the parameter uh, five. The function here, we, can, we use the double maximum, but you can choose other statistics. <clears throat> and, and then the P value here is significant, it means that parameter is not stable. It means you have the heterogeneity in your model. Um, if we change the plot equals to true, you can see the empirical fluctuation of the statistics. The, this red line here indicates the critical value and the, this, um, uh, these curved lines indicates the empirical fluctuation process. And you see the peak is here. It means the changing point is around minus 0.3 mean SES. Okay. Now we, we talked about the linear mixed model. Then we talk about the generalized linear mixed model. The computation here is more complicated and we don't have the an analytical results anymore the old results are numerical. So the conditional distribution is very similar to the linear mixed model. The only changing part is about, the, is, is about this equation. Previously, we still have the, the mean still follows a normal distribution, but here we say the, the mean can follow, uh, it can, it can follow any distribution as long as it belongs to exponential family. And here we do some, so we use the class gate decomposition to decompose the, the G, the variance covariance matrix into lambda. And uh, then the B uh, equals to lambda multiplied U. U follows a standardized normal distribution all these changes are for the ease of computation. Then after that, the general, the marginal log likelihood can be expressed in equation 18. It's like the generalized linear model, but you integrate it out uh, over U. Then the scores for beta can be think of as the the scores for generalized the linear model, and then you do the integration over U. The same rationale goes for the lambda. 
you do you can get the 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 analytical results for the scores res, with respect to lambda and then still you need to integrate over you but so, uh, sometimes we don't want to use the class E factor to, uh, so we use the chain rule to uh, change the lambda into variance covariance, which we talk usually talk about variance covariance parameters, uh, not the class E factor. And sometimes people want to talk about the standard deviation, and and then you still use the chain rule to change the parameter from variance into standard deviation. And so in merge de derived package, you can use the run par argument in as the fun uh, function or V call function to say what kind of um, uh, parameters you want. It can be SD, uh, VR, or theta. Theta means the class D factor. Then we talk about the, the difficult part. Everything can be uh, simplified in General into generalized the uh, linear model, and then in the end, all the derivatives above utilize the integral that you need to marginalize over the model random effects U. So here we use a simplified version of multivariate adaptive Gauss Hermit uh, quadrature. The simplification are based on the fact that. Um, the, the adaptive step can be replaced by the posterior modes because we know the po everything is uh, done after the model estimation. So we know the posterior modes and the variance of the random effects from LME4. Um, and you can check out these two uh, references for computational details. For now we have the scores. The second step is to get the, uh, the second derivative for, uh, which is the Hessian. So the LME4 package already computes the Hessian for generalized linear mixed models. So mer derived package only provide, but it's hidden in the package. So mer derived package only uh, provides a convenient function to assess this hashing information. Now uh, we have the we have the quantities for the scores and uh, the hashing information. We can look at some example. So this example, this space uh, data is contained in our package called Cycle Tree. Um, over one thousand university students took a general knowledge quiz, which is uh, 45 items. And we can build an explanatory IRT model. The covariance could be, uh, could be age, gender, uh, university enrollment, or elite university status. So model one, if we build two non-nesting models, model one could be um, age and gender, and the model two's covariance could be the university enrollment and uh, the elite status. Our goal is to compare these two non-nested models. The model specification is here. So for model one, the age and gender is, are the covariance. For model two, uh, the semester and uh, elite status are the covariance. These two models are non-nested. Then we use the once test. Once test, uh, this function, uh, so you, you tell once test what, is the, what are the models you want to compare, model one and model two, and then what are the scores, what are the uh, variance covariance, you just to fit in, fill in those information. And then the output is this. The first step is it will test whether model one and model two are distinguishable. If here we can see they are, the p-value is significant. It means they are uh, uh, distinguishable. The second part is about um, to 
is to test on the null hypothesis whether the model fits are equal for the focal population. Here we see, we see that um, model one is, is not better than model two and model two is not better than model one. It means these two models face the focal uh, population equally. Okay, so we, now we see all the computation details and uh, all the applications. Now we can talk about some future work um, that haven't been done. Uh, the first uh, immediate uh, application could be to ut utilize these quantities to build a generalized linear mixed model tree. And that tree could have a varying covariance, uh, variance or covariance parameters uh, in that generalized linear mixed model tree. I think this extension could be immediately. The second one is uh, about the, to have uh, some uh, project uh, related to the heterogeneity in generalized linear mixed model. This, pro uh, this uh, heterogeneity in generalized linear mixed model uh, is more problematic than the linear mixed model because the heterogeneity could impact fixed parameters estimates, not the significance test. The third one is, a, is about to extend the results to uh, models with a fixed, uh, with a, a cross or nested if random effects. For example, um, students could uh, nest it in schools, but also nest it in neighborhoods. So in your model, you would have two random effects, two random terms in your model. So we need a way to decorrelate the scores so that the, the rows of the score matrix can still be independent. I still haven't figured out a, a way to do that. Um, if you have some ideas, please let me know. Um, so that is the that is the talk. Uh, if you are, thank you for your attention. Um, if you want to try out this merge derived package, you can do the in store package. And uh, if you want to check out the the computational details, um, the equations, and you can check out these two uh, papers. Um, and in the end, I want to thank. Uh, my PhD advisor at Merkel, um, and also my co-authors Ben and Eves, and these projects are uh, supported by NSF. These are the references. Thank you very much, Ting, for giving us this nice presentation.